Hi everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter and that is Connor and we are going to talk about Scream Queens Season 2 Episode 1. It's called Scream Again, full spoilers for the episode and uh, yeah, I was looking forward to this coming back because we've not had an episode of this since before Christmas. Uh, it's been what, nine months, nearly yeah, ten? Because it was 13 episodes and you know, so we've waited this long, Season 2 set in a hospital and uh, we weren't sure how they were going to get our characters there. Uh, but here we go. But first, before we even get to that, it, the season is opening with a very similar device to last season did. It cracked me up that it was so, so similar. Just because it's like, ah, forget it, it worked. Why not, let's just do it again. Yeah, because we get a flashback to 1985 at this hospital, and again, we have a pregnant woman, so we have this whole thing of, oh, the kid must be someone now. And it's so intentionally the same, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's doing that thing where sequels to horror movies in the 80s were often just complete rehashes of what the first one was. Just it's, with different characters, yeah. yeah. It's kind of just making a play on that. And that's all fine and well. Um, so they set up this idea that this hospital is next to this really, really toxic swamp that makes people sick. And these... This doctor and nurse are too busy enjoying their Halloween party to want to uh, help someone who's dying. Can I just say, this is probably my favourite thing about this show. It's not just the, the cast that we know that's awful. Everyone in this universe is just utterly awful. Yeah, because they keep laughing. Well, it's, it's Halloween. We're having a party. We're not We're not <laughs> doing doctoring. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, they, they let this guy die so they can quickly get back to the party and throw him in the swamp. So, presumably... The baby's growing up. Although, I'm going to suspect that they're going to swerve us and it won't be the baby that's a killer this time. Maybe the guy just didn't die. Because he said, oh, I'll be dead within an hour. I guess, yeah. It's a stretch, but I mean, I, I wouldn't put it past this show. Yeah, exactly. So... I, I'm not even going to speculate because I don't care. So, cut to present day and Dean Munch is now Dr. Dean Munch. Uh, <laughs> sort of. She She's running the hospital and she gives us a exposition dump as to how she came to be here, about how she wrote this book about feminism, and then she set her sights on a new thing, and she's now running this hospital because she thinks the medical system needs reform reformation. And she goes to Zayde Williams. Interestingly, the main girl from last season, whose name I can't remember, which should probably tell you why they didn't bring her back, is the only main character they seem to not be bringing back. Yeah, I noticed that as well. It was like, okay. I mean, there's another main character that I haven't seen yet that I'm very annoyed about. Don't, don't get me wrong. Chad Radwell is coming. That, that's what I'm waiting for. That's the, he's the real star of the show. <laughs> Chad Radwell is coming. He's not in this episode, which is disappointing, but we're building up to him. We're building up to him. It's going to be a momentous occasion. It's just like this episode builds up to the Chanel's because I was enjoying the first 10 minutes. Don't get me wrong. But I was kind of thinking, oh, where's 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 my Chanel Oberlin? Like, oh, yeah. it's, it's not the show without Chanel. And so she gets in Zadie, and it's just... <laughs> Zadie just happens to have switched her majors to a medical uh, degree. <laughs> of course she has. And she, she recruits Zadie to come in and, you know, work at the hospital. Because it's, it's a, a training hospital, we should specify. Yeah. Not that the show really needs to... This it's the sort of thing where they're creating reasons and not in other shows you'd be like, Oh, this is such a stretch but in this it's just like, I don't care. Just just yeah, get fine. get it out of the way and give me what we want. Yeah, because the plot's not that important in this, it's really not. And we're introduced to two two new characters, uh, the doctors. Uh, one played by John Stamos, who's Doctor Holt, uh, sometimes referred to as Doctor Hot. Uh, the other one is Taylor Lutner from uh, Twilight of all places. And he is Doctor Cascade? Cassidy? Something like that, yeah. Uh, like that. A lot of new characters Cass here. Cass Cassidy Cascade. Oh, so I was right. We were both right. We were both right, yeah. yeah. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and his thing is that he's always cold. Like, he's, like, unnaturally cold. His little thing about ice cracked me up. Yeah, we, we, we could speculate as to, like, is he a zombie? I don't know. Um, put it past this show. And then Dr. Holt's thing is that he lost his hand <laughs> in the Super Bowl and then he corrects himself and says, no, in a Super Bowl party. 
<laughs> and then it shows it getting done in the in the blender. Not the, not the blender. The, uh... It's like the food blender thing at the bottom. Disp- disposal. It's like a shredder. It's, it's, like it's, it's, it's the garbage. Yeah, but disposal. it's a blender thing, isn't it? It's the spinning blades. Aye, but no one calls it a blender. Uh, I it's do. It's got a name. It's the garbage disposal. Yeah, but it's it's a blender. Just <laughs> it, it 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 makes them mush. It's the same thing a blender does. But it's but it's got a name. Never mind. So he yeah, and it's over the top. And there's blood spurting in his face, and that was great. I was all over that. Uh, but his thing, which was getting funnier as the episode went on, is that he get a, he was the he get the first the world's first completely perfect hand transplant where he's got a new hand from someone else, and yeah. I love how he defends it as well. Like it's my hand. If you buy a used car from someone, is it is it not your car? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but like his hand like does things throughout the episode. Like it gradually does more things. Like it it starts slamming things, and then at one point it's going for Chanel's neck, and then he notices it and he slaps his hand away. So it's it's going with that old trope that his hand's evil and it's come yeah. from like a serial killer. Um, oh, I love it so much. So he could be a suspect. His hand could be, yep, to blame for things. That's that, that stands to reason. Uh, so there's that. So that's the new characters. Uh, other than one, which we'll get to, because it's after the Chanel's back into it. So Zadie, should we mention the werewolf girl first? We'll mention the werewolf girl first, because she's introduced before this point. Uh, so this girl, with her first patient, has got this condition where she's got hair growing all over her body, and she looks like a wolf, a werewolf. I find it a little bit amusing that their first case is curing a werewolf with Taylor Lautner. It's like. Uh, yeah. purging his reputation almost wink wink yeah. <laughs> um, but so they have some fun with this and she's depressed because every, every doctor on the planet said they can't cure it and Dean Munch is like we're going to cure this and, and like Stamos is like eh, it's uncurable it's like, no we're going to yeah. cure it we'll find a way it's like, but we can't it's uncurable <laughs> like, I like that that whole back and forth again it's yeah. adding to the show's humour and um, and then they've got this random character who pops in, uh, whose job it is to try and cheer people up, and he comes in and offers her a lollipop and some razors to shave. <laughs> oh, it's amusing. Yeah, new addition. But it's all build up. It's all like because my whole time I'm thinking, but yeah, where's the Chanel's? Like, where are we get? Where's what? Where's what we're here for? Yeah, where's the meat of these? This show. And Zadie goes to Dean Munch says, "Look, it's a." Given that you wrote a book about feminism, it's a bit of a sausage fest around here, if you don't mind me saying so. And Dean's like, all right, I've got an idea. And that's when we cut to the cut Chanel. To Chanel. Now, I want to actually jump back, because some of this was in the uh, the exposition dump that uh, Dean Munch had earlier about how she ended up being here. Yeah. So the Chanel's were cleared of the crime because a Netflix documentary about them Yes, yeah, so it was famous. essentially making a murderer. Yeah, it's making a murderer. And Hester incriminated herself on tape to uh, Denise, Denise uh, who has who recorded it on VHS. It's set in 2016 and she recorded it on VHS. I love that she's an FBI special agent now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Yeah, she gets offended because the, the, the thing he yeah. says, oh, you're an FBI agent. She's like, special uh, agent. It, <laughs> I love how far she's come. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and also when it cuts to footage of the documentary, it's in like really crappy VHS footage as well, <laughs> yeah. as if it was like from years ago. And it's like, no, it's oh, great, great, night, excellent touches, excellent yeah. touches. And um, but yeah, Hester incriminates herself because she thinks it's double jeopardy if she just admits to the crime because she can't be tried for it. It's like, no, 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 that's if you've been tried for the crime already. Someone else was tried for the crime. You've not even been accused of anything. And so no, it's double jeopardy, and she gets really angry, and I just She's just screaming it. And it's nothing, great. nothing's funnier to me than Denise shouting back, "It's single jeopardy!" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, oh so good, so so good. But yeah, it gets to the Chanel's. It cuts to them, and the first line that Chanel has is "Good morning, uh, idiot hookers." Idiot hookers, which was a big line from the first season that everyone loved, was when she called them idiot hookers. Yeah. So, yeah, excellent back in. And, of course, conveniently, all of them have taken jobs that are all somewhat medical in nature. Yeah. Which, again, this whole bit of is gold. Chanel admitting that she loves blood, so she now takes blood. Um, 
She's really good at poking people. Really good at poking people. Uh, Chanel number three is working at a, like a, a sperm, sperm bank. bank. Yeah. yeah. And she mops up the floor after. But she loves it. Yeah, the look in her face, the glee <laughs> that she gets yeah. to clean up sperm is ecstatic for her. <laughs> and then also just seeing Chanel number five like get really frustrated answering phones and like scream, <laughs> scream at the patients, I'm on the phones, I'm trying to talk. And also it led to a return of a joke I had completely forgotten about. Oh yeah, I'd forgotten about this as well. But one of my <laughs> favourite running jokes from last season was that she had teeth in her vagina and uh, Chanel number one, Chanel Oberlin, says in the narration... But I think she just got this job at this dental uh, hospital so that she could get free braces for her vagina teeth. Oh, that cracked me up. So good. Like, everything about this section was just like, oh, yes, Chanel's were back. This yeah. is great. Uh, and of course, one shows up and is like, all right, I'm going to make you all medical students, blah, 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 blah. Here you come. Although they all think they're getting paid on top of the free housing and free medical school. And yeah. they're not. <laughs> they think they're going to be actual doctors. Yeah, no, they're, they're told to ghost. In fact, one of my favourite scenes of the episode is the debate over what the word ghosting means. My favourite of that scene being Chanel's explanation, which is something that happens. I'll admit this has happened to me. I never knew there was a name for it. But apparently when you uh, go for a number two and you turn around and the poop's already gone, it's vanished into the yeah. ether. Yeah, yeah. No, I knew it was called ghosting. I never knew that was called ghosting. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was news ghost. to me. So that, that was just I, I, I a actually fun knew time. all of these definitions of ghosting. I did not. I, I knew of uh, two of them, but not that. Not the put one. The put one was new information to me. So is is one of the ones you knew the actual one that Dean Munch is using it as? Oh yeah, yeah. That's the yeah. main one. That's the the proper one. That I when you're learning and you're ghosting yeah, yeah. someone, that is the one that I expect, which is which just made the whole thing funnier, that they all had these weird definitions and that's the real one. It's then when they go into the girl as well, uh, the werewolf girl, and we go, oh, we're, we're just ghosting. She's like, isn't ghosting when you leave a party early? <laughs> oh my God, I'm so glad this show's back. It is I know. so, so funny. So, so funny. Um, other new characters, Christy Alley, who's the head nurse and sort of runs the hospital. And yes. she, she has it out for them, and Dean Munch is all for her, like you know, riding them hard, and like she's like proper in their face, and you don't belong here, you're not nurses. I can't remember what her actual name is, but it sounds like awful. Uh, it's Hoffel. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Hoffel. Um, actually, I want to rewind a bit. Actually, I, I want to talk about the Chanel's entrance to the hospital. Because I love that they play it like from Zadie's perspective, as if it's a horror scene. Like, as she's doing the, the laundry and the, yeah, the basement. Yeah, and the doors creak open. Yeah, and the camera goes Dutch angle, it goes tilted, you know? Yeah. And it's like all tense moment, and then they walk in and the music hits. Perfect music, as might I add. Yeah, I forgot how good the music with this is. But Zadie still screams no, as if she's about to get killed. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it works all the way, all the same. Yeah. Uh, other nice touch that I loved uh, from a little bit later is when uh, uh, Chanel's three and five are in the operating room. Chanel number three, uh, because it has to be sanitary, has uh, latex gloves over her earmuffs. Uh, there was quite a few earmuff little gags in this, wasn't there? She's constantly like holding them, running away, holding them and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. A couple. Yeah, there was some good, good moments uh, with that stuff. And also, so yeah, so Chanel and uh, Dr... Uh, Holt. Holt. I was going to say Hot. I was like, what's the real name? What's the real name? Holt. Uh, I don't want to call him Dr. Hot for numerous reasons. But but to be fair, you know. You think he's hot? Did you not see the shower scene? <laughs> well, the ladies were clearly all impressed. It's I clearly intentional. I, I love that Chanel decided <laughs> to strip immediately down, strips off. <laughs> yeah, to her underwear to impress him. <laughs> as you do. Yeah, um, I want to watch it again and see if the hand makes any indications in that scene. He also has a tattoo that the camera focuses on for a couple of yeah, minutes, yeah, yeah. a good few seconds. It's like a, a H. Sort a of H one. and like a heart type thing. See, I and, until the camera like made a big deal about it, I assumed it was another Harvard joke. Hmm. Possibly. Because he makes a big deal yeah, about yeah, Harvard. Yeah. Like, oh, I went to Harvard. He does make a big deal about going to Harvard. Um, so yeah, the cure the werewolf girl. 
very quickly and easily, despite the fact that every doctor in the country almost has told her that it's not possible. <laughs> it's Chanel that does it as well. Yeah, Chanel and uh, Doctor Holt uh, do the do the job, and the first thing that the and oh yeah, she, she loses all of her hair, including the hair in her head, and of course Chanel number uh, three says she, or five, sorry, looks says she looks like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Also, yeah, it's, it's weird how insensitive they are as well, because earlier on when they first meet her, they keep asking all these really inappropriate questions. Yeah, Chanel number 5 has that thing about, when, when I need to throw up, I think of hair in my dream, but doesn't always do it. Can you describe your dream <laughs> for me? <laughs> oh my god, this show's so good. Um, so yeah, they, they cure it, that's kind of the plot, that's the main plot of this first episode, is, is they come in, they cure the real wolf girl, and they get in the good books and get off probation which they got in earlier for you know being sensitive and they make Chanel number five stay back for the night shift and she looks after the wheel of girl now that she's had a makeover because that's another big scene is the Chanel's all give her a makeover to make her look it cracked me up where feasible. you never see them washing their hands for any medical stuff yeah, yes. as soon as it comes to the makeover you see them doing the proper proper procedures for washing their hands and then immediately like I think it's Chanel number three she's like wiping her arm across her nose and stuff like yeah. immediately well, it's after. not even just that. It's a very. Not only do they wash their hands in sync and do the proper thing, they both look at each other and nod in sync yeah. as well after, afterwards. And it's just perfect little touches that just. Uh, there's so many litter throughout this episode. It is. And there's probably some small jokes that we've missed because it's just. It's so dense. So many. I was laughing so much. Um, I, I really missed this show. And of course, we do end with the first kill. And again, it mirrors the last. The, the last season because the first kill at the or not the first kill but it may have been the first I can't remember if it I was, think the, it first was kill, the first kill but it was a kill at the end of the first episode at the end of that yeah. first hour there was a decapitation and yes. a, again here the killer who has a very similar outfit to the killer in the first I, season I, I'm calling it the green demon well they actually call it the green mini at the start of the episode right because uh, the nurse who's talking to the doctor on the flashback says, my mother used to tell me stories about this place, and we used to all talk about the Green Mini, so it's the Green Mini. Sure, but I, I like Green Demon. Re, re, it mirrors Red Devil more. It's the Green Mini. Wow. If that's what the show's calling it, that's what it's called. I will not conform to that, yet. But yeah, but it's way over the top, because the mask has got these big horns, and it's like oozing the yeah, swamp. There's like swamp yeah, the swamp the slime. Yeah. Um, and it decapitates... Uh, the werewolf girl, and we see see him take a second swing, but we don't see him actually kill Chanel number uh, five. And I'm assuming that she's not dead. I'd be assuming she I, was, because I'm assuming not. But at the same time, I can kind of see them doing it. Well, I can see them doing it to say, okay, the characters from season one aren't safe. I get that point, but she's. Not, I can see them killing her later on, but not here. They didn't show it. She's not dead. No, I agree with that theory but in general i feel like one of them could go at some point yeah i kind of hope it's not one of the chanel's though if it is though i do hope it is five she's I'm my not... least favorite chanel's out of the three sure but i still like her i do as well but if it has to be a chanel sure, sure but as long as it's not chad radwell is, 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 chad. is all i'm saying chanel number one and chad radwell are untouchable you cannot touch those two no if they, if they die, the show's dead. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Basically, is what I'm saying. So, yeah, I, I can't wait to see how Chad comes into this. I, I have no idea, but it's going to be amazing, isn't it? Oh, my God. Oh, it's going to, going to be phenomenal. And I can't wait to see him and Dr. Holt, like, share screen time. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Oh, just imagine he's going to like, try and sneak down to the morgue, because you know, you know he's got a thing for dead people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I, I hope he has some stuff with the hand as well. <laughs> oh, I'm just thinking of possibilities. I can see him doing a weird thing with a with a Taylor Lautner as well, because you know he's like cold, like he's dead. Yeah. Um, I want to make a bold uh, theory claim here. So I Go think on. um, Munch may actually be more involved directly with the backstory this time. I wouldn't even surprise me if the woman who's pregnant is Munch herself. In the flashback, mm, okay, and that's why, she, like, you know, because she says something at one point. I've got plans for those Chanel's. You know, she, she seems like a. Now it could just be a swerve because last season they teased that she may have something to do with the killer the whole time, and she did have that thing where she kind of murdered her husband. But uh, 
Like, I'm just thinking this time, maybe they'll, like, oh, this time she's yeah, directly involved. Be. This is why she picked this hospital. This is, you know, this is, you yeah. Know, she's orchestrating things so much that it would make sense that it was her. I could see it not being, but I'm just, you know, throwing that out. Yeah, there. it's possible. Um, anything else we have missed? I don't think so. It was pretty thorough. Yeah. I think that's everything. Like I said, there's probably some other jokes we missed, but we'd be here all day if we were just going to do those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, it's great. The, once again, the tone, the energy, as soon as those Chanel's start showing up on screen, and the way everything just flows from scene to scene, and the quick wit, and oh, just... It's glorious. It's great. Oh, I missed this so much. So that's Scream Queens, uh, Season 2, Episode 1. Uh like and subscribe. Let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments below. Of course, we'll be doing the rest of the season week to week. A uh, bunch of other shows coming back over the next couple of well, couple of months, really. But um, new shows as well. So check those all out. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, guys. We will see you next time. <laughs>